Today we're going to talk about how to help someone else when they're going through anxiety, what to say, what not to say, and also what to do if they're going through a panic attack. Last week was more of an in-depth look into what anxiety truly is, what the cause is, and how it plays out in your life, and also how to reduce your own anxiety. So if that's what you're looking for, then I'll link to it up there. But from this video, what I hope you get is more of a confidence in knowing what to do when, let's say, a friend or a family member or a colleague is going through anxiety and you want to help them, but sometimes we can feel at a bit of a loss of knowing what the right support to give is. So I hope from this video you get a better understanding of that and it helps you in those situations. So welcome to The Power of Helping. My name is Ruben Wax. I'm a trainee counsellor and I'm passionate about improving people's lives so that they're then in a better place to empower and support the people around them. Just to preface, it's really important to remember that everyone is individual. What everyone's been through is individual. What everyone is going through right now is individual. And also how people react to what they're feeling is very individual. So when you're watching this video, take in as much as you can, but be prepared for some things to work, some things not to work. And that's absolutely fine. The fact that you're trying is already going to make a big difference. Okay, let's quickly cover just a couple things that are going to really help us get in the right mindset for when we are in front of someone and we're supporting them. What's going to really serve you well when you go into these situations is, even if it's not true 100% of the time, is to have in your mind that the vast majority of anxiety and stress is caused by our environment, the way we are living, who we're surrounded by, and situations that we're involved in. Or it can be an acute cause, such as like a car crash or a particular trauma. So an important message I've been trying to instill in myself, which can be really helpful when you're in one of these situations, is instead of asking what's wrong with you, is to ask what's happened to you or what is happening to you. When we ask someone who's going through psychological pain what's wrong with you, there's a high chance they're just gonna say, I don't know. But if we ask what has happened to you or what is happening to you, it gives them a space where they can open up and discuss and try and get on a journey with you to try and figure out what is causing this anxiety. And sometimes that could be the first time that someone's asked them that. They could be thinking that it's just, they're broken or it's a brain malfunction, but allowing someone to look inside and see, is there anything in my life that could be causing this anxiety? So asking them the right question or even just going in with that attitude could potentially empower them to make a real life change, which could really help to reduce the anxiety. Okay, so one of the biggest hurdles that I see people going through when they're trying to support someone with anxiety is knowing what to do, what, what's the right support to give that person, what do they need? But the best thing that you can do, instead of assuming, is just ask. The majority of the time, they're just gonna tell you exactly what they need. Whether that's you just sitting and listening, whether they need a hug, whether they need you to really sit with them and make a concrete plan of how to reduce their anxiety, whatever it is, they're gonna be a much better resource for letting you know what they need than just assuming. After a few seconds, it can be really useful just to clarify, is that still what they want? Because sometimes people can think, that's actually really what I need. And then when they actually get that support, they think, actually, I really don't wanna be touched right now, for example. But then they feel too awkward to ask. So give them that opportunity to take back what they've asked for. That can be really useful for them. Then it can be really useful to label the emotion that they're feeling. Help them to put a name on what they're feeling. Because when we put a label on any negative emotion that we're feeling, it really reduces the impact that it's having on us. So you could say to that person, you feeling scared right now? Are you feeling sad? Are you feeling angry? Are you feeling frustrated? Are you feeling anxious? All of these things, even if you get it wrong, it doesn't matter because it's gonna help them to really hone down on what they are feeling. And when they can put a label on it, it will reduce the impact that it's having on them. So the best thing you can do is stay with their emotions. If you try and tell them that things aren't that bad and they will just get better, they're not gonna feel that connection that you're really truly getting what they're going through. So you can be as open and honest and think what would it feel like to feel like how they are right now? And you can tell them, I'm so sorry you're going through that. It sounds absolutely dreadful. You must feel terrible. And instead of them, being taken aback, they're just gonna 
be so grateful that someone is finally really getting how they're feeling. And I'm on this journey myself of truly understanding how to properly support someone with a mental health issue. So if you've been through something similar and you've got some ways that have really helped, then please let me know below because I'm always up for reading and learning more. And now I want to quickly cover how to support someone when they're going through a panic attack. Because panic attacks, they can come out of anxiety and when they do arise, it's just great to have some base knowledge of what to do and how you can help them. Panic attacks are sudden and they're more often than not quite random. So when they do come up, you'll often see symptoms such as fast breathing, palpitations and a lot of fear, as well as a bunch of other symptoms as well. But as with most things, not all panic attacks are the same. Some people will experience them quite differently from one another. It's really valuable for us to know that you can't actually die of a panic attack. So in the moment when it does happen, just remember to center yourself, be calm, because for that person, they actually can feel like they're gonna die. So keep that in your mind and just so that you just stay calm with that person. However, it's key to ask the person if they've ever had panic attacks before, because there are other issues and other problems that mimic the symptoms of a panic attack. But at the same time, if you're not sure what the best plan is, ask them, ask them what they want to do, because if they wanna to go to the hospital, and there's the plan made. And we can use the same skills that we use when we're supporting someone with anxiety here. So being calm, asking them, not assuming, asking them what they need, and then offering support such as an arm around a shoulder, but checking whether that's okay with them. Making sure that you stay there with them, acknowledge how bad they're feeling, sure, but then also you can be positive, let them know that you're there with them and they're gonna get through this. And also if they say that they're struggling to breathe, you can acknowledge that they're speaking and that means that they are breathing okay. And that logic can help to calm that person down. And there's been one technique that's actually been shown to me which has been super good at supporting people when they're really feeling anxious or they're going through a panic attack, which is where you get them to point out five things that they can see, get them to touch four things around them, get them to hear three things, get them to smell two things and ask them what they can taste. And what this will do is it will bring them completely into the moment because panic attacks are a fear of uncertainty and a perceived threat and not knowing what's coming. So if you can bring them into the moment, it's gonna to help to reduce the symptoms. And what you wanna do is say to the person, we're gonna do this technique to reduce the symptoms, but you're gonna do it as well. So just be the person who does it first, point out the five things that you can see and then ask them to. It takes the person out of the moment and it brings a bit of lightness, which can actually be really beneficial to the person. But now what I wanna cover is how how to be and how to support this person in a more general sense, how to help them manage their anxiety and stress, how to support them in the right ways so that they can then hopefully overcome their mental health issues in the long run. And another thing you can do which is going to be really valuable for them, which really really helped me and when I was going through my anxiety and I know has been really helpful for others, is just to let them know that they can call you anytime. And most of the time they're not going to use that that often, but just knowing that you're there as someone that's ready to listen is really, really gonna help them through this. So when they end up do calling, it's just important to remember not to give advice, just to be there and listen, because what that person really needs in that moment when they're feeling really bad, is just for someone to be there with an open heart and listening empathically and just ready just to be there for that person so they can feel like someone is really getting what they're going through. Listening is a real skill and does take work, but the more that you work on it and improve it, the better support you're gonna be able to give. So when it comes to what to say, the best thing you can do is just to be inquisitive. So ask questions, ask them how they're doing, how are they feeling? and show with your body that you're truly interested. Lean in, nod your head, show with your voice that you're hearing what they're saying. Also let them know that it's okay to feel what they're feeling. Whatever they're feeling, that's all right. It's an accurate response to whatever they have been through or they are going through. And you can help them see that there's more to them than their anxiety. Tell them the things that you really appreciate about them. What is it about them that makes you feel so drawn to them? What do you benefit from your friendship? All of that's gonna help them to remember that they're not just their anxiety and you appreciate them no matter how they feel. All right, so now some things not to say to someone who's going through a mental health issue. Firstly, make sure that you never tell anyone with any mental health issues that it's all in their heads because even if that was true, the person who's experiencing it, that experience is very much real. The pain they're going through is very much real. And at the end of the day, all pain is processed in the brain, whether it be physical, if we touch a hot stove or we cut ourselves, 
that goes through our body and is processed in our brain. So it doesn't matter whether it's physical or psychological, the pain is real, so it doesn't benefit the person just to tell them that it's in the brain. And lastly, try your best not to blame them. If they're doing something that you don't understand, they're not doing it for attention or just to be difficult. They're just doing the best they can. Next week's video is actually gonna be all about effective communication. So that's gonna really help you with all of this, be able to reach the person empathically and non-judgmentally. So just before I summarize, I wanna take a second to acknowledge you and say, if you've watched all of this video through so that you can support someone you care about better or you wanna update your skills so if this does ever happen, then you really can support someone in the right way, I think you should take a moment to acknowledge how wonderful that is and that you're really taking the time to do something for others and you should feel good about that because taking this time to do that is going to benefit this person that you're thinking about and also all of the people around you so it really is amazing that you do that so I just want to say a big big ups to you. All right, and so to summarize everything we've talked about, if you are supporting someone with anxiety, making sure they know that what they're experiencing is okay. It's okay to go through that and it's okay to experience that. You're there for them and just show them that love and caring that you have for that person. And then if you do end up in a situation where someone is in a lot of psychological or emotional pain, just remembering the basic skills of just being calm, being curious, being empathic, and just being with them. And all of that is gonna really benefit the person you're caring for and really all the people around you. So thank you so much for watching The Power of Helping. And if you really enjoyed the video and you got something from it, then please consider hitting the like and the subscribe button below. And if there's someone who you know is caring for someone else or you feel could really benefit from this video, then please share it with them and I'll see you next week.